Hello, cool, attractive, and interesting listeners. Welcome to another episode of the Geek Press Podcast. I'm Noah, and today co-host Lewis and I give our thoughts, the good, the bad, the ugly, and everything in between on the Dungeons & Dragons movie. We also talk about our favorite projects that were announced at Star Wars Celebration, and you get to hear me rant about how excited I am for Ahsoka for about 40 minutes. If you're enjoying what you're listening to, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and check us out on all our social media platforms. Help us read the number one chart so we can inflate our ego to an egotistical and upsetting amount. Thanks. See you in a bit. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, days and thems. My name is Luke Spicarsa, and as always, welcome to the Geek Press Podcast. Today on episode 46, I am joined by... The one, the only, Mr. Jack Black. Um, Mr. Black, how's your how's your day been? Hey, what's up, Lewis? How's it going? It's me, Jack Black. You know what? Hello, viewers. I am Noah. Each week, I'm subjected to making it so every impersonation. They're never good, so I don't know what Lewis expects from me. You know, it sounded like you were trying to do a Jack Nicholson at first. Oh my gosh, maybe. Yeah, that's what I thought you were going for originally. All I could think of, like, the thing is, when I hear Jack Black, the first thing I think about is School of Rock. and. It's not like that's a good or bad thing. It's just like that just interrupts my idea of an impression. What do you so mean, just... bad thing? That's a great movie. I said that I said it's not a good or bad thing. I'm just like, oh, Jack Black, School of Rock. And then I think about School of Rock, and then I forget to do an impression. <laughs> so you don't think about any of the other stuff he's been in? <clears throat> no, I think about Lucha Libre. Uh, what is it L- called? Lucha Libre? <laughs> what yeah, that, is that what we're calling it now? Lucha Libre? <sighs> Uh, Nacho Libre. There sorry. you go. So you're close. I was close, but yeah, that's that's the two films I think about when I think of him. <laughs> I know uh, he's done like a million other things, but uh, Lewis, what's going on? How is your week? What are you listening to? What are you watching? How's it going? So my week has been kind of meh, you know, mm-hmm. nothing really too crazy. I um I was kind of like I, I had a big like panic attack and i had like a lot of anxiety this week and Mm -hmm. last week so i've just been kind of like getting my bearings together you know if that makes sense Mm -hmm. and it took it took it took about a week not gonna lie and um i feel like i'm in a good spot now you know nothing nothing Mm -hmm. like crazy happened to me but um for the listeners just yeah just you know just like whenever whenever you you feel overwhelmed whenever Mm -hmm. You you feel like that? Just just step away for a moment. It's always gonna do you more good than harm. So yeah, that's that was that was my week where I was just kind of like getting my groove back, and um, I've been writing a lot more. The only thing I haven't been doing, I think I, I think I've talked about this. I haven't been journaling as much, so I need to mm-hmm. get back into that. But um, yeah, I think for for this week, I've just been working. I I got hired to do a new guide for an upcoming Xbox game. Oh, excited! Uh, you know, I I gave for for the listeners. That's a lot of information on a on a game that's about to be coming out soon. So I can't really say, but there you go. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I just 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 that. I think nothing too crazy. Just just work, honestly. Yeah, that, that's been my that's been my week. Nothing nothing uh nothing fun at all. Actually, no, I lied. I lied. Uh, I I went to the movies like four times this week. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. I saw the D and D movie, I saw John mm-hmm. Wick, I saw uh, no, I went three times. Three, I fucking mm-hmm. forgot. But I saw D and D, John Wick, Scream, and Mario. Fucking all good movies, except the D and D movie. Wasn't a fan of it. Mm-hmm. But I know you really liked the D and D movie. We'll talk about. That I enjoyed later. it. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll talk about that a little bit later. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what about you? What's what's your week been like? Now? Let me tell you. Okay, if you guys don't want spoilers for John Wick, skip ahead 30 seconds. I'm just going to say one thing. My mom and her husband went to go see it, and I was like, you know what? I should go see John Wick. I'll see it on the $5 Tuesdays in Uptown. And that was my plan. Uh-huh. And then uh, my mom called because, like, I watched my grandpa, and she's like, update, like, how's your sugar? Are you giving me spills? All that. And I'm like, yeah. Uh, skip ahead now. 
30 seconds. Okay, so um, spoilers free. Here you go. I called her. I was like, oh, how was the movie? And she's like, oh, so sad. He died. And I was like, what? Yeah. Mom. And she's like, what? And I was like, you just spoiled the whole movie. And she was like, you weren't going to see it. And I was like, yes, I was. And she's like, no, you weren't. You know, and I was like, I, ha- I had plans. And she's like, did you? It's funny. And I was, because like, I was thinking, too. I was like, how dare you? I was like, this is going to be a movie Noah's not going to watch because it's not his, it's not his style. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not too, it's not too mm-hmm. artsy farty or it's Star Wars for you. That, that's the criteria for Noah. And then, and then, so yeah, and now that I know that he dies. So. Okay, you're back. You're back. Everyone, you're back. Hopefully, you skipped ahead 30 seconds. I will, I will say this. Even though you know how, how like, the ending, it's mm-hmm. still a fucking good movie. I heard it's a really great movie. Yeah. I heard, I heard about it. Like, but, I've, uh, I've, only, mm-hmm. I've only seen John Wick 3, mm-hmm. and I thought my, my biggest complaint with John Wick 3 was I was like, there's hardly any fucking story in this, you know? Mm-hmm. They're like half the time they're just killing each other, which isn't isn't a bad thing. But I'm like, give me some substance, you know. Mm-hmm. But this one right here, fucking good. Like the story's good. the 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 fighting in that movie, I, I, I kind of looked at it as like a dance, you know. Mm-hmm. Like when Keanu went for an uppercut, um, the other guy would go for a kick. When that guy went for a kick, he went for a block, you know. And everything mm-hmm. was just so well choreographed. Like, holy shit, that movie was good. Like, even even at the very least, if you just want to watch some really good action, that's your movie. I'm sorry. Okay, but uh, no, it's great. I, okay. It's funny because you've only seen the third one. I've only seen the second one, so we're both on equal steps. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, my week has been good. Just I had spring break last week, and then now I just have regular school. Well, you, got, you got like a few more weeks left, right? Yeah, I graduated in May. It's very exciting. Ooh. Ooh. It's funny. I, I don't know if I've said this on the podcast before, but I'll say it again just in case. Uh, I'm the only one of my mom's kids to uh, graduate from college. So I, I, my, she's, very, she's almost more excited than me because I'll be like, oh, well, I don't need to get a robe. How about I just wear like my real Hondo? That's what I did. Community college black robe. And my mom's like... But it's but we can buy it. It has long peach on the sleeves. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. She's like very excited. So I love that for her. But uh yeah, nothing new with me. Uh I've like you, I saw the D D movie. I enjoyed it. Starring Chris Pine. <laughs> Chris Pine, one of the best Chris's. I've heard he's kind of a dick. Yeah. That still says a lot. Yeah, like I saw, I saw this um, on TikTok. There was these people during like the red carpet event, mm-hmm. and they made a giant D twenty. And for those who are unaware, a D twenty is one of the main dice. I know exactly what you're talking about. You, okay, okay, yeah. Keep a, going. A D twenty is one of the main dice you use to play Dungeons and Dragons. It's pretty much like you use it for like ninety percent of your shit. And um, at, at the red carpet event, these people had they made a giant D twenty. And it wasn't it wasn't actually dice. It was made out of like other like soft material. And they uh-huh. went up to fuck. Who's that one dude in the movie? The only brown guy in the movie. He's one of the main characters. Um, the the paladin or the uh, wizard. The wizard. The wizard. Okay. Uh, Justice Smith. Yeah. So they went up to they went up to him, and they're like, "Hey, we made this giant D twenty. Do you want to roll?" And he's like, "Fuck yeah, I want to roll. Like that's so cool." And so that like they went up to a few other cast members and they, like a few of them were they were all excited about they're like yeah let's let's roll the giant d twenty, and they go up to Chris Pine and they're like hey Chris do you want to roll this without fucking skipping a beat he's like no it just keeps walking, I'm, I'm like damn bro like just <laughs> exactly I was like damn and I saw like the people on their face like the expression they had they were like. It was a forced smile, like, ha, 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 yeah. Because you have to play that shit off at that point, you know? Uh, <laughs> not me. Let me tell you, if I'm ever at one of those things and somebody does that to me, I say, I, I'll turn to the camera and say out loud, well, you heard it here first, folks. Chris Pine's a fucking dick. <laughs> <laughs> I just say that really loud to my camera. I just be like, he's a fucking dick. Knowing, knowing your luck, that would be like that one in a million moment where it's super quiet. And uh-huh. everybody heard that, you know? It's like, you know, when you're at a club or something and you're like, uh-huh. hey, 
And then as soon as you, as soon as you decide to shout, hey, that's when the, like, it's all mm. silent for a split second so everyone heard you. Exactly. Or, like, you accidentally <laughs> fart, and for some reason, everything goes quiet after the fart. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those moments. Okay. So, but just like D&D a giant movie. fart, that's what mm. D&D has in common with it. It's very stinky. In my opinion. But it can also be very funny. Yeah, that's debatable. Uh, okay. Oh my. Okay. Here's my question. Okay. Do you are there issues? Do you feel like there's genuinely issues with the movie, or is it something that's just not for you? I feel like there's issues with the movie for sure. Yeah. Okay. So and, let's let's talk about it. Okay. So my my first one is that. Oh, wait. Uh, really quick. Really quick. Okay. Uh, spoilers for the D and D movie. Oh yeah. Spoilers, Kevin. You've been warned. Kevin, yeah, you've been, you've been... Hey, this is attractive, sexy, and smart editor Noah Garcia here. Just letting you know that if you would like to skip ahead and listen to us talk about Star Wars, you can go ahead and jump to around 36 minutes in of this runtime, and then that'll just be us talking about Star Wars. Okay, editor out. Freaking warned. Should we, should we like, recap the movie? For in case people need a reminder, or you yeah, no, nah, we're, we're just we're just kind of we'll, we'll hop around, we'll hop around, okay, we'll hop around. But um, so my I'm gonna go through the stuff I didn't like about the movie. Okay, okay. I, and I'll try to counter you. Yeah, I felt like the character motivations for everyone mm-hmm. was like the first half of the movie was super fucking. The pacing was all over the place because it it felt very like video gamey. It's like. We have to go get a wizard. I know a wizard. We have to go get a druid. I know a druid. And I'm like, oh, okay, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, like, it was just, they, they were just doing a million different things at once. And, like, I felt like a lot of it felt forced. Like, they were like, okay, we need to make sure everyone has their own little moment, you know? And one of the biggest things, too, was with the, the girl who plays as a druid. Um, uh, Doric, Sophia Lewis. Yeah, her. And, um... I felt like her her motivation for the sh- for the movie was so fucking lame. She was like, "I need to help my people, and this is the one chance I have to help them." Mm-hmm. It, it was like, "Okay, okay, like you couldn't have done this earlier." It just I I just felt like everyone's motivation for joining was really lackluster. Okay, I I will say right now that your issue with that is just the issue with D and D in general because that's just. They're trying to what this movie's trying to do is mimic like a game at the table. And I mean, like, look at our game. Your character has a whole quest to take down the church, this and that. It's like this big intricate thing, like relating to like Chris Pines, like bring back his wife, like something complicated like that. And then someone like our friend Quincy is just like, I just want to go on an adventure. No, but like they're simplistic in this complex backgrounds. I but and I oh, go, for mm-hmm. it. go for it, go for it. And there's just there's I, I understand if that kind of storytelling doesn't translate well to the screen for you but for me i since i didn't take the movie too seriously i was like oh he wants to bring back his wife oh she wants to save the forest okay that's your motivation let's run with it and i will say that um it's just translating a D campaign to film and if you don't like that format i get that yeah no and i'm, I'm happy you said that because that was one of my biggest ripes with this mm-hmm. because i'm like i'm all for the stupid fucking the the stupid like shanties you get into it's like oh you know my character just wants to go on an adventure my character yeah. i feel like that stuff translates well in D and it's it just didn't it didn't go all over well for me in the movie because i'm like mm-hmm. you guys are fucking you guys are professional writers give me something more more juicy you know i get that it's a D and D movie but have put some stakes into it because at least and I and no, this is kind of like apples to oranges, but Lord of the Rings did it better. Where it's like we have yeah, to go I on think, an adventure. This I think that's why they're trying to do like a lighthearted comedy because they're going to be compared to Lord of the Rings. They're going to be compared to Game of Thrones. They're going to mm-hmm. be compared to all this. So I think right off the bat, they kind of make it a comedic thing. Like okay, so I don't have to get too invested because I'm just here for like the ride. I'm just here for the adventure. Yeah, that that was just that was just something I didn't really care for. I <laughs> I thought it was. They just like really watered it down, and I get it. Like you said, that that was something going through my mind. I was like, when we play D anD D, we do stupid shit all the time. Or sometimes our character motivations as simple as we kidnap someone, and there you go, they're our best friend. You know, so like that's that's stupid, no matter how you put mm-hmm. it. But it's fun. I just so I think yeah, 
and uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. and another okay go for it because i'm gonna go on another subject i was gonna say yeah so i think it's just that's the, the issue is just the fact that they were trying to adapt a campaign to a movie and that format just didn't work for you mm -hmm. on film and I, I get that, but I, I, I guess I because I didn't take the movie too seriously. That that was, was my kinda, that was my thing. I, I I was expecting Oh see, I wasn't. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. the expectations of like a because I, I hope I in fact I hope they didn't go too serious because if they go too serious, then they're gonna be compared to Game of Thrones, they're gonna be compared to Lord of the Rings, they're gonna be compared to every fantasy thing ever. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, you know what? Let's just have fun. So I took everything with a grain of salt. I was like Oh, he wants to get back his daughter. Oh, she wants to protect the forest. Oh, Michelle Rodriguez is so hot. Like, that's, that's <laughs> it. But, uh, yeah, I would say story aspect, it does. I feel like the whole movie moves really fast. Mm -hmm. And there's very few times where you get, like, a second with the characters. It's a lot of, like, quick, fast-paced thing. And I feel like that's also intentionally done. So I feel like if there's any issues you have with it, I feel like at least you could say that's an intentional move on the people behind the film rather than like a mistake, mm -hmm. but go, go on. What's your, what's your next point? So complaint number two, mm -hmm. Chris Pine, Chris, Chris Pine, Chris Pine is mm -hmm. fucking old. Stop trying to make him look young. Like why, why is it during those flashbacks? He has, that, a weird complaint. he has that Justin Bieber ass wig and his mm -hmm. fucking wife looks like she's 10. Like, they're like she doesn't look ten, dude. She look she looked like she was a kid, and he has this Justin Bieber haircut during the flashback scenes, and it's like we're so young and happy. I'm like motherfucker, you look like you're about to drop me off at school. Like, come on, it looked weird. I don't, I don't it it looked so. so uh, now this is a difference of opinion. Go back and watch that scene. Go, I don't, you know, I'm uh, I'm not saying go pirate it, but do what you got to do to go watch those those flashback scenes. He's wearing a Justin Bieber esque wig to make him look younger than what he is, mm -hmm. and he, I'm just like, bro, you look so fucking old. Like, stop trying to look young. Just embrace it. I I don't know if that's his fault or like the director's fault or something, but it just looked weird. It looked really weird because he looked significantly older than his wife throughout the whole movie, even mm -hmm. even when he wasn't wearing that wig. And there was a there was know. a scene. I think you're making a big deal out of nothing. I don't no. I thought it was trust me, they're just like uh, as someone who's an advocate for like, you know, just accepting like your body is as who it is, that was weird. That was really weird. Like he it, it just very much felt like uh a, a, a man grasping at his youth. I was just like, bro, you look you're you're well, too I don't old know to if, be playing. I don't know if that is I don't think that was his decision. I think the film workers was like, oh, we're doing a flashback. We gotta make you look younger. But still, I just CG his face or do something else. Uh, like that, you uh, know? Yeah, I think you know, once again, you took it too seriously. I was just like, oh, yeah. he's younger. And plane number three, another Chris Prime. Yeah. Chris, why do I keep saying Prime? Chris Prime complaint. He's a bard mm -hmm. in the movie, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. never, oh, that's actually, uh -huh. never fucking once uses his loot for, for anything. You never, you never see him do any bard related. He never casts spells. Mm -hmm. Never does any. He is the most useless motherfucking character in that whole movie. I think it's very funny because I've I've listened to several other podcasts that like I subscribe to, and uh, there's a there's a one of my favorites. It's uh three black halflings where it's three like uh black people who uh -huh. talk about D and D in the D and D space, and one of their biggest things was like he didn't cast any fucking spells. Oh, he did. Nothing. He was he was so fucking pointless to that movie. And I was just like, "That's very funny." Yeah, the whole time I'm like, "Okay, he's gonna use his loot now. He's gonna he's gonna he's gonna do some fun with it." The only yeah. time he used it was when he was singing to uh, the barbarian, and then when uh, the wizard used him as like a decoy, and it wasn't even him. I know. I was so excited because when I saw that like decoy spell, I was like. Oh my gosh, is that is that like is he finally casting like an illusion spell? And then no, it was the wizard. And I was like, damn it. So, <laughs> I mm -hmm. just had a hard time of like, what the fuck is your point? And and then they make it a point in the movie too. He's like, Oh, I come up with ideas. I'm like, that's just lazy fucking writing right there. Come on. Yeah, I I don't know why they made him a bard. They could have just made him a fighter. Exactly. They could have done literally anything else. But then did they ever even say the word bard in the 
in the movie? No, but I believe it, it's it's like I think that's but one like of those things. Is, it's like synonymous, you know. It goes without saying. It kind of like it's kind of like that's how you're presenting it. So it's like, oh, mm-hmm. okay. They never make it a point not to call him a bard. You know, they never mm-hmm. they never say, oh, we need we need this class or we need that. You know. I think the only thing they say is, uh, like, oh, only, only when they really need something is when they really say it. Like, I don't think they ever call Michelle Rodriguez's character a barbarian. No. All right, so complaint number four. You ready? Okay, all I'm right. ready. So, and I get it. This, this fuckery happens all the time in D&D. Mm-hmm. It didn't translate well into the big screen for me. It was, mm-hmm. um... It was the scene where it was, it was towards the end, so this is kind of spoilery. There, there's a scene in the movie where the guy, where the guy who has his daughter kidnapped, has a knife at her neck. It says, "One more <clears throat> step, and I'll slice her throat." And he's looking at the entire party, at <clears throat> everybody, and all of a sudden, a fucking potato comes flinging at his head. I'm just, well, see, let me let me just tell you that's a, that's a that's a not twenty on stealth. Uh, stealth. I know, I know, I get that. I totally get that. You know, mm-hmm. but I was like, that shit right there just doesn't translate well into the big mm-hmm. screen because he explicitly says, "I'm looking at all of you." And mm-hmm. what you know? That's you know that's just the functions in D and D. I don't know what to tell you. But she rolled a she rolled a nat twenty on her uh, sleight of hand roll, and she's like, and then I, I throw it, and the dungeon master is like, are you are you sure he's gonna cut this girl's throat? Like you need to get a nat twenty, and she fucking gets that nat twenty, hits him in the head. It just did. Like, that's just, that's just functions. I, I know, know I know, but it just didn't it did it fit well. It well, and you just you're taking it too seriously. I'm I was just, just like, oh, got him. <laughs> is that yeah? So those were those were some of my complaints, and. And just to just to backtrack to the bar thing, mm-hmm. uh, if you have a D and D Beyond subscription, I've just found this out. If you have a D and D Beyond subscription, which is free, you can actually like see the items and the character sheets of everyone in the movie. Mm-hmm. So you can go and see like if you like the items in the movie, you can like borrow that. But uh, they have the the sheet for Chris Pine's character, and it literally has spells on it. Are you ready for the spells? Uh, that's what pissed yeah. me off even more. Go for it. Friends, message, charm person, disguise self, and suggestion. And that what's it's just like he has spells. He has where's another one? Disorienting words. Uh, he has a reinforced loot. He has a multi attack. He can make two reinforced loots attack. And it's just like he has these things; they just never use them. And so, I mean, this, this movie looks like it's making its money back. Like it broke even the first weekend, and I I think it might make money. So, if they make another one, hopefully they um they have him do more shit. Because I was a little disappointed. Another another complaint I have is I, that um, I'm glad me talking inspired you to complain more. Thank you. I think my, my <laughs> final complaint that I could think of is that. He the the paladin guy, it was like he just kind of came out of fucking nowhere. Mm-hmm. Everyone was like, "Yeah, I know him, I know him," and he was such a fucking dry character, you know. I I get what they were doing; they were trying to make him a simple but funny kind of guy, but it was just such such a such a dry character. It um, was. I I would say that it's definitely intentional because there's kind of a joke in the D D community that if you're a paladin. You have to be like cut and dry, and did it. so I think they're just kind of playing on that meme. But I kind of get you because apparently there are rumors that he was originally supposed to be a part of the party, mm-hmm. like he was originally going to join, and the advertising kind of suggests that because there's a lot of him in the advertising. But I guess for some reason they decided to not include him a part of it. I I'm not sure why, but um, I thought he was fine. He was just sort of like it again. It felt more D and D in the sense that like. The the DM wanted to be like, look at this cool character I created. Like, oh, look at this, look at this frog. That's so cute. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it just it felt like, oh, look at my cool character. So that that's kind of just what I felt like. I guess yeah, it just and that that whole fight scene he did where they they um where where they see like the big fat dragon, mm-hmm. not the dragon, but like the the minions he was fighting prior to the dragon. Mm-hmm. That whole fight kind of just felt meaningless. 
it, it was mm-hmm. just like like kind of going back to what you said. Oh, look at this cool character. Look what he can do. Yeah, that's just sort of like a and D when a dungeon master wants to show something off. Like, oh, and in the middle, because there was a whole sequence where he's like, "I'll take care of it." And because I'm someone who like listens to a lot of like Reddit horror stories, I'm like, "Oh, this is a fucking DM wanting to show off their cool shit and not letting the party fight because the party should have fought them." Exactly. Like, first off, so I I kind of took it as that, but like it, you have a point that it doesn't translate well to film. But I go for it, go for it, go for it. So uh, I get that. If I guess I don't know. I guess my my answer to all your all your complaints is that well, you are partially right. I think you need to not thought, take it so seriously. I thought you were gonna say you're just wrong, and I was ready to laugh. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, you have some points. Uh, just don't take it too seriously. That's all I gotta say. Yeah. Um. I I think I I took it too seriously. I just can't help it because I mm. love I love I love movies. You know, mm-hmm. you and I love cinema, and it's just I I I kind of just felt like they were very loosey goosey with this, mm-hmm. and as some I'm not like a big D and D player like you are, but I'm getting mm-hmm. there. It, it just it just kind of felt like half assed in my opinion. Mm-hmm. But what didn't feel half assed and felt, in my opinion, felt a lot more respectful to the source material. Mm-hmm. Actually, hold on, you know, you know, no, no, no. take it back, take it back. <laughs> <laughs> what did you like about the movie noah oh my gosh uh i thought it was pretty funny mm-hmm. i i enjoyed it because i didn't take it too seriously i was like oh this is a fun movie i enjoyed seeing some of the spells and ideas from dungeons and dragons kind of show up in live action like i i'd recognize a spell and i'd be like oh that's how that spell would look so interesting and i just had i just had a fun adventure uh i'm a big fan i i liked the concept i was like okay uh i also did have a few issues with the movie like you said the whole paladin thing and i also was a bit annoyed that um chris pine and justice smith's uh you know wizard hustler and confidence bard who wants to like save his kid they kind of had the main story and michelle rodriguez and and uh Sophia Lailas. They were just kind of there, huh? Yeah, they were just kind of there. Like Michelle Rodriguez's motivation kind of just fell into Chris Pines. And I think one of the best genuine moments of the film spoiler is alert, when gonna, oh, spoiler alert. Kevin. Um uh, where Chris Pine is uh looking at his I think it, I'm pretty sure it's his daughter, because there is a moment where the daughter shape the shape the shapeshifter merged into the daughter. But there's a point where Chris Pine, it's a realization for himself. He's like, this whole time I've been trying to bring back my wife and we need to save your mom. Because Mashaji's character is that little girl's mom. Because the little girl didn't know Chris Pine's wife. It was a whole thing where he had a realization like, I need to let this go. Mm-hmm. Your mm-hmm. mother is Michelle Rodriguez. She's dying. We need to use our magic item and save her. And that was like a genuinely sweet moment that I, that I was surprised they went there. Cause I, I hadn't taken the movie too seriously, so I was like, "Oh my god, it's growth." But and uh, I had I had the polar opposite. As soon as she died, I was like, "Okay, on to the next <laughs> person." <laughs> I wasn't like that. I was just like, "Oh my gosh, Chris Pine is learning a lesson." Yeah, because I was they they did like a whole montage scene where it's, mm-hmm. where it's like you know we we raised her together. I was like, I I care less about her. All right, well, let's bring in the next character. <laughs> <laughs> is there at the table? And they're like. Oh, okay. What's your next character? And she's just like, oh, you can't save her. And I'm like, no. <laughs> uh, did, you, Pine, did you like Pine that? Mm-hmm. Did you like that TikTok I said to you? It's like me introducing my new playable character, Hoblin, who was cousins mm-hmm. to Goblin and Foblin and Toblin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You just change one letter. Uh, <laughs> Michelle Rodriguez is like, Holga's dead. Now her sister, Tolga, is part of the party. <laughs> her identical sister who looks at her, right. just like her. <laughs> uh, they're twins, in fact. Estranged twins. <laughs> so, but I don't know. I just had a good, fun time. I was enjoyable. There's uh-huh. a lot of little complaints, but when you don't take the movie too seriously, I feel like they kind of fade away. Mm-hmm. Uh, if they do another one, I hope they kind of... They're, they're setting up for another. Like, the way mm-hmm. it ended was clearly... They're, they're going to yeah. try to make another one. So I think if they make another one, I hope uh, Dork and Holga get a bit more 
uh, action story wise. Uh-huh. And I hope Chris Pratt does some fucking spells. Pine. Oh, Pine. Fuck me. Look at us. Yeah, we all... keep fucking up his name. You know, all those white people look alike. They all look alike. Honestly, the only thing that makes Chris Pine different is the gray hair they keep uh, trying to brown out with hair dye. Honestly, too, I will say this that one, my girlfriend, I told her this before the movie, so she was like, You fucking simp. I was like that. I was, I was telling her, I was like, that Druid, she's a cutie, certified mm-hmm. cutie. And it wasn't. It, every time she popped up, she was like, "Fuck!" I'm like, I didn't even say anything. Like, I'm just trying to watch a movie. <laughs> no, she is cute though. Yeah, I will. Oh, I, there, oh, go for it. Go for it. There's a weird thing where um, she's supposed to be like a tiefling. Yeah. And okay. I thought these tieflings are like usually their skins are different colors, and I'm just kind of wondering. Did they just not want to paint her? Is that I, what happened? They didn't I, want to do the bite. I, I had I had looked that up too, a couple of days later, and I was like, wait a second, because my char- my first character was a tiefling, and mm-hmm. I was like, they're they're traditionally red, and so I looked it up on Google, and Google was like, well, technically they can be any shade of color, and I'm like, that, 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 doesn't that kind of like defeat the whole purpose because they're like essentially half demons? Mm-hmm. When you so I, yeah, they're supposed to be like weird ass colors, and I was just like, they didn't want to paint her face. That's it. She didn't, want to, she didn't want to sit in the makeup booth for like two hours where they do all the stuff on her face. That's that's literally probably what happened. If if the Guardians of the Galaxy cast does it, you can fucking do it. I'm pretty sure you do not do not compare this movie to Guardians of the Galaxy. This is nowhere near Guardians of the Galaxy. You know what's funny? Uh huh. Um, I better laugh. Um, a friend of mine who I won't name, mm-hmm. um, compared it to Guardians of the Galaxy because. He was telling me, yeah, I, I got to, this is him talking. Mm-hmm. I, I got to, I got to go to an early screening of it and I took my girlfriend. It's like very Guardians of the Galaxy, like how they like, they bring the team together and this and that. And that was a big part of why I didn't like this fucking movie because I was like, oh, Guardians is like, it's very campy, but it's also very serious at the same time, you know? So I, yeah, there's just, there's just a lot of expectations. And then I heard it was good from you. So yeah, anyway. I think. It's Guardians of the Galaxy. If Guardians of the Galaxy was not, was made by Peacock <laughs> instead of Disney, <laughs> but uh, I kind of get what they're trying to say. Because, but just because it has a similar setup and function doesn't mean it's the same quality. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. the Tiefling thing I thought that was funny. I I think they should just been like just make her a satyr or something. If you want the horns, if you want like the fucking I don't know. And also because uh, I was listening to Three Black Halflings, plug them again. They they were like, oh, we know some people are like, oh, in first edition, tieflings were regular skin. And they said, we don't care because now during yeah. the current game, <laughs> during the current game, they're all colored. And they were also complaining about how druids have lots of different types of spells. They mm-hmm. have like shape chains. They have a lot of like druidic magic. And all she really did was owl belt, like shape shift. And I think they brought up an interesting point that I didn't think of is that they wanted to really differentiate what each different person could do. Uh-huh. So they have the one that does magic. They have the one that's a barbarian. They have one that wild shapes. And then they have Chris Pine who makes the plans and hits people with his guitar. So like they want to differentiate for people that don't know the classes. This is what each person does. This is their function. This is how they're useful. So that's probably why they didn't have her doing other types of magic. But uh I feel like that's that's an understandable excuse, but I don't care for it. I'm like, just let her. Like, you can make it clear. You can just have a line where they're talking. And she's just like, oh, yeah, my magic's different from yours. Mine's on nature. Yours are, yours are, mm-hmm. yours, like, it's from the universe. You know what I mean? They could have had a very simple line and have her do uh, some fighting. But I, one thing I did enjoy, actually, I wish there was more fights. But for the fights that we did get, I enjoyed them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I liked the magic. I liked how magic looked a lot. I thought it was a lot of fun. Yeah, that was cool. <clears> hmm <throat> I hope the they world, do. They made the world look very beautiful. That that's something I really yeah. enjoy. I liked all the different locations they went to, even though it felt very fast. Uh, I enjoyed all the locations, and I, I enjoyed well, one thing I really did enjoy was the practicality with the, mm-hmm. the bird guy, the dragonborn. <gasps> like that mm-hmm. shit was like it. It looked a bit like animatronic on the way they moved a little. They were like, uh, that's practical effects. Yeah. They were like puppets and stuff. Yeah, but yeah, that's the word I'm looking for: puppets. Um, it, but it just looks so fucking cool, like just to see it actually get made, cause like nothing beats practical, and um, th- that that was probably one of my favorite parts of the movie. 
And that's cool because spoilers again, when they grab that bird guy, they're grabbing like an actual person in a costume. You know what I mean? They're not grabbing like a green screen, green screen like statue T posing. Like they're grabbing an actual person. So I thought that was really cool. I really enjoyed that. And okay, my question here right now: If they came out with a sequel, would you watch it? Yeah, <laughs> I respect that. I respect it. I would. I'll that be. that would be like a five dollar Tuesday. Like mm. when I got absolutely nothing to do. Yeah, you're like, I have nothing to do today. If I know you Tuesday, Noah won't shut the fuck up about it. Let's go. Yeah. I'd I'd watch <laughs> I'd watch Black Adam 2 before oh, I'd watch God. that. How dare you? <laughs> How could you? Ugh, fuck. Now I'm mad because I'm thinking about Black Adam. The Blacker Adam. <laughs> That's isn't that what we said the sequel was gonna be called? <laughs> I, don't I don't remember. And then the, the third one would be the blackest Adam. <laughs> All right, but, you know, there's a lot of things we didn't like about it, and there's a lot of things we did like about it, but there's also a lot of things we do like and don't like about Star Wars. And mm-hmm. Star Wars Celebration is still going on right now, right, as a, as a recording? I think so. Yes, I guess. It's like a weekend event or something like that. Yeah. And a lot of news dropped on, you know, just, just on Friday alone, because mm-hmm. we, we're recording on a Saturday. This is going to drop, like, on a Monday. So by by the time this drops, you know, it'll probably be more mm-hmm. news that, that came out. But let's let's talk a little bit about some of the stuff. I, I want to jump into the one you're most excited for. Mm-hmm. And I, I have some some uh, some thoughts on this. I was talking about it with my girlfriend as we're watching mm-hmm. the trailer. So for context, for those who are unaware, Noah is like a bigger Star Wars fan than me in regards mm-hmm. to like he reads the books. He actually watches all of the shows. 90% of Star Wars media Noah has consumed it, you know, like 90% mm-hmm. of it all. Me, on the other hand, I've only really watched the live-action stuff, and i played mm-hmm. the video game. You're a bit more picky. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Noah is obsessed with Ahsoka. That's his girl. He loves her through and mm-hmm. through. And from what I hear, I never got to this, I never got this mm-hmm. far in the Clone Wars because I capped out. Apparently, she becomes a badass. And yeah, it's it's surprisingly it's like one of those shows where you actually get to see the development of someone because she really starts out very annoying. Yeah, that's that's and, that's the Ahsoka I'm familiar with right now. The thing is, is like I I know people at the time were very mad, but I think when I saw it because this was way back in like a long ass time ago, 2012 or some shit. Uh, when I was able to see it, I was like, oh okay, this is her arc. She's annoying as fuck, and hopefully she'll get better. And then eventually she did, and I was like, okay. But uh, I really like Ahsoka. Just be- I want to say real quick, mm-hmm. there's a there's a joke online where girl girls are like, uh, Star Wars, uh, they're like, oh, Star Wars red flags for guys, and one of them is if they say Ahsoka is their favorite female character, and I thought that was very <laughs> funny because and the rationale was like, oh, if you choose a female character, if you ask a Star Wars fan what their favorite female character is and say Ahsoka, that's like their safe bet. Like that's that's the one they hide behind, <laughs> and I was just like, "You son of a bitch!" <laughs> but no, uh, I like Ahsoka a lot because she seems she has like a survivor story that I just think is like really interesting. Mm. Because her whole the whole course of her journey has been like being indoctrinated to the Jedi, being rejected, and then being, uh, you know, it's like a lot of like understanding the Jedi, the hypocrisy of the Jedi of that era. And then, like, there's a lot of guilt because she sees what happens to the world and the Empire, and she wants to draw back, but at the end of the day, she's a good people, and she has to get involved. So I, I really like her story. And the trailer, I think we talked about it on, uh, I believe, your stream. I'm Joshua Joe Star at Twitch. Uh, and we talked about it actually really quickly that I'm worried for the people that know nothing about this character yes. because there's so much lore because involved in her story. As... as... As as we were watching the trailer, not you and I, but my girlfriend, mm. um, she, the her first thing was like, "Oh, so this is they're, they're going for the girl boss approach." She said something like that, and I was like, "Yeah, I guess they are." And another thing is too, I was like, "Oh, I know this is this person's from the cartoon, this person's mm. from the cartoon," and I I said that like five fucking times as I was watching the trailer, and I was like, "Oh no, I don't know shit about any of these people." Mm. Like, I'm like, this show isn't for me. 
this is for this is for like the you you know mm. this is for the people who watch that and i think that's a giant red flag right there where you have to watch fucking what is it a total of like 10 seasons worth of content to mm. understand who these characters are I feel like on, on I understand that, and I'm actually worried about that, how that's going to mm-hmm. resonate with audiences. But I also feel like you can do the flip and be like, oh, this is for the Star Wars fans that have dedicated their time to this character and these, uh, this lore. Because Rebels did get four seasons. Whether or not you like it, there are Rebels fans. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I, I, did, know, I, I did piss off, I did piss off a, like one or two Rebels fans. That was kind of funny. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I, I get that because the animation style is very much it's, of its Oh, time. no. It, it's, it's also garbage. It, no, we're not gonna. We're not, I'm sorry. I'm it's also no, it's okay. It's also supposed to be reminiscent of the early drawings that were the concepts for Star Wars. So like things like the very pencil thin sabers, like that's a reference to the original drawings. Like some of the creatures are straight out out of like concept drawings for Chewbacca before he became Chewbacca. So the, just because something is stylized a certain way doesn't mean you have to like it or think it's good. Uh-huh. So if you don't care for the animation, I get that totally, one hundred percent. It took me a second to get used to it, but uh, yeah, it's it's very much. I'm very worried. I hope the first couple of episodes are set just establishing who these characters are, because, like, how how are you supposed to explain to people like, oh yeah, Ahsoka was Anakin's apprentice, and then you're gonna be like, he had an apprentice win, and then you have to be like. Well, there was a whole TV show, and they're like, "Oh, well, why did she die?" And they have to go, "Well, there was," <laughs> and like, and not not only uh-huh. is, is she was she his padawan, but like they fucking threw hands. They did throw hands, and then you have to explain <laughs> spoilers. You have to explain how Ezra Bridger found an ancient Jedi temple and found the <laughs> nexus of all time. I don't even know what the out. fuck that is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly, that's the issue here, because all the rebels and Star Wars Ahsoka fans will know, but everyone else who doesn't know that shit and doesn't have the time to watch like ten seasons of a cartoon will not know what's going on. So I hope to God, see my voice is like cracking. This, of, like, yeah, so much- you're pleading for Dave Filoni. <laughs> Dave Filoni, I need him to put. I said this earlier. I'll say it every day. I need Dave to put his whole Filoni into this fucking show. If it fails, I will show up to his house and I will burn all of his little black cowboy hats. Oh, no. (laughs) It better be a good fucking show. And I hope to God they take time to explain who all these fucking characters are. Because you can do it. You just need to take your time. I'm happy you brought it. I'm happy you said that, too, because I kind of feel myself getting a bit like Star Wars fatigue now. Yeah. And I'm just like, ah, man, I knew this. I knew this day was going to was going to come. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong. I love me my I love me my Star Wars. Give me my lightsabers. Give me my Siths and all that. Like the mm-hmm. the trailer looked cool because you you get like I don't know if they're Inquisitors or they're Siths. I don't whatever the fuck you call them at this point, you know. Mm-hmm. But you have red lightsaber people. I'll just keep it at that. And they're throwing hands with Ahsoka and all this and that. And I'm like, this looks cool. You know, at least we get some more of this. Mm-hmm. But I'm ready for more lightsaber fights. Exactly. I want, yeah. I need- exactly. That's what I'm. That's what I'm trying to say. But you know what? You can only have chicken so many times too. You get tired of chicken. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you can love chicken, but you can't have it every day. And uh, you know, no, I disagree with you on that. Chicken is S tier food. <laughs> you, you could, but you, you know what I'm trying to say? You know what I'm trying to say? I know what you're trying to say, but I'm not gonna let you disrespect the chickens. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I love chicken too. I just didn't want to. I was just trying to make an analogy. But one of those things too. What uh, what I was gonna say is um, made me forget. Good. Made me lose my train of thought. Excellent. <laughs> That's what I want. But uh, yeah, uh, I'm glad as someone who doesn't know anything, you at least thought it looked interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I hope at least the fights are good. Mm-hmm. Because uh, if they have the same team that was working on the, the Jedi episode in Mandalorian, I thought those fights were pretty fun. Oh, now so... I remember what I was going to say. Okay, go for it. So uh, mm-hmm. a big reason why I'm yeah. kind of getting fatigued is because originally, wasn't it like, Back Order sixty six, like less than a hundred Jedi survived. Wasn't that the like the original thing? Uh, I can't give you a concrete number, but yes. Yeah, so it was something like that. But now it's like fucking Jedi's are surviving left and right, left and right, and I feel like the significance of Order sixty six is becoming less and less of a a big deal. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. 
and it's yeah that, that was just my thing too i i i, I was it was gonna fit in better with how i was saying it earlier but yeah that was that was it i not say i will say that um it was it was said that it was said that a fewer than 100 jedi that is a point but we've only we've seen less than like 20 that is you know what true. i mean but the I, thing is is like if every story is about a surviving jedi then you're like oh here's another surviving jedi because mm. what is there there's obi-wan ahsoka cal kestis I uh, mean, for fuck's sakes his, his game is called jedi survivor like exactly <laughs> So I, I get if you're tired of like seeing the Jedi surviving stories, I, I understand that. But also like we've seen, I think in in media we've seen like less than twenty. So, and you see, but I get that you have seen um, fuck, what's his name, Jar Jar, Jar Jar's Jedi. Like, mm-hmm. where's, do, do do they answer that question, to Mando? I haven't finished the season yet. Jar Jar Jedi, what are you talking the about? The guy who played is Jar Jar, Jar Jar Binks. Oh yeah, we don't find out if he dies or anything. He's just kind of there. Oh, okay. It was just sort of like a look. He's back and he's cool moment. That's what I figured. Okay. Mm-hmm. So maybe, maybe he's alive. Who knows? He'll probably die a horrible and tragic death because by fucking, that's a, by Vader. Yeah. <laughs> like you, even in Star Wars Rebels, they get they have Jedi's, but they get rid of them. <laughs> they get rid of the Jedi. like the series cannot end with more Jedi's because Luke has to be the one. Mm-hmm. And even that's even how they kind of have Ahsoka because she's like, I'm not a Jedi. And everyone's like, bro, you're a fucking Jedi. And she's like, I'm not a Jedi. I'm not a fucking... Look at my sabers. I They're hate, fucking white. I hate that I'm logic. Not a fucking Jedi. He's a Jedi. Mm-hmm. Fucking Jedi. You know? Mm-hmm. It, it's like... It's, yeah, a, it's, it's, a, it's, like in, it's the hipster approach, you know? And I will say, it's a very interesting thing here. That at the end of the trailer, there's this robot that's like, oh, maybe it's time to start again. That robot... Well, see this... You have to watch the show, and it's annoying. In the Clone Wars show, he's shown as a robot that has lived for like a thousand years or whatever. He's a robot that helps train youngling, younglings to put together their sabers. Uh-huh. So he's like, I don't know if he's talking to Luke. Hopefully it's not horrible CGI Luke. I hope maybe he's talking to Luke. Maybe he's talking to Ahsoka. He's like, maybe it's time to put this thing back together. And the thing that Ahsoka doesn't call herself a Jedi is because she still pictures the Jedi as the old order. She's like, I don't adhere to their principles it's like when you leave the fucking christian church but you still have the same ideals so you're like i'm not a christian but you still believe in god it's like a whole thing i don't know where that analogy came out of my ass i just pulled it out but it's like i don't know i think it's interesting because if we see the journey of like okay i'm gonna be the jedi and i'm gonna make the order different but the thing is that would be exciting if it wasn't for all the latest movies exactly where we know that's gonna fail and, like, I remember when people, because, okay, I'm going on such a fucking tangent. I'm so sorry. Go for it. But I know, I know when people were like, oh, Grogu's going to go train with Luke. And I was just like, get Grogu the fuck out of there. I don't want him anywhere near Luke. I know how that's going to end up. Luke is going to turn all, he's going to let fear overcome him, and his whole temple's going to be burned to the ground. So you get my baby Grogu the fuck out of there. So even though I didn't like in Boba Fett when he just when they dedicated two episodes to Din Djarin and they had Baby Yoda showed up, I was happy because I was like, thank God he's away from Luke. Because that's a disaster waiting to happen. Mm-hmm. So when I see this thing where like Ahsoka's starting a new order, I'm like, oh Ahsoka girl, are you gonna die? <laughs> I'm just like, well, isn't she isn't she confirmed dead? Because at um at the I end- think it's a I think it's alluded to, but it's never like solid, but it's kind of obvious she's dead because all those forced ghosts. And let me tell you, that, that scene that we're talking about, I actually like that. No, that was a cool scene. I, I'm not it hating was on like, that one. It was very like Avatar calling on all the ancestors, like Avatar State, time to take down this fucking guy. I, I like that. But uh, yeah, she's probably going to die. <laughs> but yeah, that's enough of Soka. Also, I, too, I, like, what okay, more could so. you do with Ahsoka, right? I feel like they've done mm-hmm. just about everything with her. That, that's a conversation I had with uh, enemy of the show, Diego Crespo. What did, what did you uh, two come to come to? Oh say no, about we, that? we were talking about it, and I was like, "Oh, he's like, yeah, I like the character too, but I'm just like, where else do you take her?" Hmm. And I was just like, "Yeah, I think it's more of like a personal redemption story because she felt like she failed Anakin. She felt like she couldn't." work within the jedi order yet she's still a jedi she has a lot of conflict and he was just like well isn't that the story of obi-wan 
<laughs> and I was like, and I was just like, yeah, that's a good point. But I think it's different because he never rejected the Jedi within him. He never rejected that ideals. He never rejected the order. And she did. She's not the outside of it. So I feel like she needs to find her own Jedi way. And I think that's, that's an interesting story that could be done. And whether or not they're going to do it is the question. And speaking of Jedi way, the one thing, Jedi. one thing I am excited for is the, the Ray movie that's going to be coming out. Oh my gosh. The Ray movie. Very because, excited. Because I, I'm not a fan of her taking the Skywalker name. Uh, but I'm I'll, okay with that. Yeah, but I mean that's that's a, that's a small eh, depending on how you look at it. But mm -hmm. I'm not gonna be like one of those people like, oh my god, Star Wars yeah. is canceled. You know, I just didn't like it. No, mm -hmm. nothing more to it than that. But um, I am. I've been saying this for a long fucking time now. We need to get out of the Clone Wars era, and there's there's three there's three fucking eras that the that mm -hmm. Star Wars loves to sit in. They love to sit in a little bubble. Clone Wars. Mm -hmm. The fall of the empire and hosts fucking order 66. Mm -hmm. We we need to get the fuck out of that already. I'm tired. I know. I'm oh tired God, of it. So that's why when they announced this Ray movie, which for those who are unaware, Ray was like the lead. Go watch the new trilogy. And she she's the lead of the, of the You know what? Movie. I'll tell you, you can watch the first one, Force Awakens. Uh, watch a few clips from The Last Jedi and then just read the wiki of Rise of Skywalker and you're good. It's not as bad as you say it is, but there, you will you will leave questioning some choices. Uh, uh, very excited. Daisy Ridley will be returning. It's set 15 years after the events of Rise of Skywalker. Uh, it's about Rey attempting to rebuild the Jedi Order as a Jedi Master. And it's directed by uh, Charmaine Obad Chinoy. I have no who idea is, who she is. Uh, She's done a lot of like indie projects. Uh, she's a Canadian journalist and filmmaker. She's like an activist. She's done a lot of like independent projects. So since so she's not a house big break, yeah, I would say that. And okay. <clears throat> my voice is oh my gosh, I would say that. <laughs> <laughs> go, go drink some water. Go drink some water really quick. Right. Your I will say that she must have had a really good pitch because she's not a household name. But yeah. what are your thoughts on this? Go. Uh, okay, for one, I've always I'm liked I yeah. I've always liked Ray, and I know we've talked about this on the podcast a little bit. Um, not a podcast on my stream that they need to Ray needs to get her ass beat, you know. And I say this because when you look at all the main protagonists in all of Star Wars, fucking Anakin gets his hand cut off, gets beat up. Luke gets his hand cut off, gets beat up. Ray, not even a scratch. That she doesn't even get the common cold. She's just this fucking unstoppable force of nature. And I'm just thinking, I'm like, why Why are you so special? Like, you never explicitly say that. I know you could always say, oh, the force. But that's, I feel like that's such a lazy cop-out. She needs to, like, she needs to be humbled, you know? I want to see her, I want to see her struggle a little bit. I want to see her, like, be be scared in this fight. Like, I, like, I know I'm going to get my ass beat, but if I don't fight you, I'm going to die. You know, I want to, I want to see something like that, you know? Because we, we saw uh, that with Luke and Anakin a few times. I will say, I will say you're mostly right. That's, <laughs> that's my thing of the day. You're mostly right. <laughs> I will say two points of contention are uh, she gets captured in the first movie. Y you see in the fight scene in The Last Jedi with those guards, she does get cut several times. She does get hit. Mm -hmm. uh, she mm -hmm. loses the fight of, of, the, of, the, of that lightsaber with Kylo. Like, it breaks in half. So she, she has some losses. But the thing is that the losses aren't turning points or defining moments in her journey. Mm. So, like, she does get hurt. She does lose. They're just not, like, a big loss that defines who she is as a person. Like, Luke will lose his hand, and that's a defining moment in his journey. Like, his lightsaber turns from fighting blue to wisdom green. You know what I mean? Like, there, there are fights that define these characters, and she's never really had a fight to define her. It's more of an emotional moment that define her. And I would say that they say... You know, the thing is, like, you can hate this or like this, but it's stated in, uh, I believe, the second movie that, uh, you know, within the Force, there are, there are, like, Force parallels. And there are parallels in the Force, and thus, as he grows stronger, she kind of mimics that. Hmm. They're kind of like Force, they're like kind of like, like weird twin in the Force things. 
which makes it weird when they like kiss in the next one. I'm like, oh, I don't like that. But um, yeah, that was, that was yeah. a little weird. I know there are big like Ray and Kylo shippers. I never cared for that relationship. I I'm was like, girl, he's a Finn. Nazi. Yeah, I thought that would have been nice. And but, you know, they um, did my boyfriend dirty. That boy should have been the Jedi. He should have been the Jedi. I hope he comes back as like a student. He's just like, yeah, I got a lightsaber. I'm I like, I like to think it's like that scene in Little Dicky or fuck, what was it? Um, the Adam Sandler movie where he goes back mm-hmm. to kindergarten, and so you, you I, I know you've seen the picture. It's like a bunch of little kids in a kindergarten room, and it's just Adam Sandler mm-hmm. sitting there. That's that's uh that's Finn, the one fucking <laughs> adult in like the little in the kids' classroom. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bunch of little fucking tiny Jedi children. He's like there. He's like, what you what you get for the answers seven? And they're like, I'm not showing you. He's like, what what did you do? He's like, oh yeah, I smuggled some shit, shot this stormtrooper, this and that. Oh yeah, I play tag. <laughs> <laughs> he's just like going to another kid. He's like, hey hey, you see the teacher? I'm hitting that later. <laughs> the kid's just like, the kid's just like, why are you hitting? And he's just like, you're like, oh, never mind. <laughs> so, I hope honestly they do him right. I felt like he got screwed out of a lot and, and like ignoring all the racism and yeah. shit that came out with his character. I felt like I I felt he had a pretty good arc of being, you know, that stormtrooper that realized he was force sensitive, finding freedom. I, I thought that was plain and clear, but they didn't take it that way. And that's annoying because yeah. there are clearly moments where he could like feel the force in those movies, especially near the, the Rise of Skywalker, where he could like feel Ray when she was in trouble and stuff. And that's like explicitly a force ability. I, so I, I, I read this uh, little excerpt from IGN where he mm-hmm. was saying, he's like, yeah, I'm happy that I'm no longer in Star Wars. I'm just mm-hmm. I just want to be a fan again. Mm-hmm. I was just like, man, Star Wars fans are the worst. They're they're just as bad as anime fans, mm-hmm. in my opinion. What do you think? Honestly, yeah, they're really fucking bad. Did you know that there was a whole subsection of the internet that got mad in Andor because there were bricks in it? I remember. Yeah, I remember, we talked about this on the podcast. Wasn't that, wasn't that insane? You know what's even more insane is that we haven't even finished that. I saw the first episode and that was it. We haven't finished it. We were hyping up. We're like, yeah, Hispanic and Star Wars. We're like, oh, fuck this dude. Uh, Apparently, it was led by some YouTuber called Star Wars Explained. Uh, He was like a big proponent of that. And there was a joke online where in the latest episode of Mandalorian, there's folding chairs. And everyone and everyone's just like, don't tell Star Wars Explained. There's folding chairs in the Mandalorian. He's going to freak out. I thought that was really funny. You know, really quick, too. Um, with the Mando, I, I've heard this season is like the weakest one. I haven't finished it. I, I will say there's a very interesting thing that at Celebration, uh, Filoni said that the Mandalorian isn't specifically a they're, they're, the way the season's going. It's not it's not specifically about Din Djarin, It's about like the Mandalorian people. And he like explicitly said that um, about the show, and I think that's really interesting. And you know, he's he's getting a movie. Mando, <laughs> oh Dave, uh, Dave Filoni is getting yeah. a movie. Uh, he says that he thinks of the Mandalorian era as more of a New Republic era, and I think that's I don't know. I think it, I, I think it, if I see a CGI Leia and Luke in this movie, oh, I'm I saw. I saw um I saw on Twitter it was like Filoni has all the pieces in play and it was a CGI yeah. uh it was a CGI from uh Indiana Jones where it was a young Indy mm-hmm. and it was Luke and Leia and he was like he's gonna make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> so much. I I guess I don't need to see them again because I have like books and comics and shit. But I understand that for those that want to see those characters again, just recast them. Just recast them. Mm-hmm. I don't care if it's like I know people were pushing hard for Sebastian Stan as Luke or whatever. Uh, bring who was it in the Han Solo movie? Alden Allright or whatever his name was. Just bring just bring in new actors. I hate the CGI face so much. You know, I'm not I'm not hating on the CGI face. I don't think they're as bad as everyone says they are. I I would just prefer just but, uh, just give me new actors. But I get I get the uh, the ethical question behind it. Mm-hmm. I, that's 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 the problem. I I. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, I just look, going back to going back to what you said with the Mando. Mm-hmm. I think that's a little weird that you know, all, season three he Filoni is like, no, this is the thing. We're just gonna do a hard pivot. Um, where it's like, okay, I I get it. It's called the Mandalorian, but 
Din is the Mandalorian, you know? Yeah, but um, Bo-Katan is a Mandalorian. I know that, but she, but the the show, you, but you had two show, two seasons of the show centered around Din and his adventure. Just, well, it was centered around Grogu. You get what I mean. I, they're, they're a package. <laughs> it, it's it's all about them and like what they're doing, and then all of a sudden, just to kind of do that, like I again, I haven't finished it, so I can't really speak. I'm kind of talking out of my ass a little bit, but it just. From what I've been watching so far for season three, it seems like it's all over the place. And mm-hmm. apparently fucking Lizzo and Jack Black are in it. So, I mean, that I, I, I got they're, they're just NPCs. You don't got to worry about I, it. I don't know. I see that, though, as kind of like a red flag, per se, just because the Mandalorian, the show, the Mandalorian, like it's it's a very they take themselves super serious, you know? Mm-hmm. There's hardly, as far as I know, there's there's rarely any jokes in that show, unless it's like Baby Yoda like being a bully, but other than that, there's really it, it it's a serious show, and um like they don't, again I haven't seen it, I'm just going based off of what I've with like pictures shit you've tweeted out stuff I see on TikTok, um, they I don't feel like they fit the meta like if they were like in the Bad Batch or something I'd be like all right that's cool, I I'd I'd be willing to kind of look the other way but um. That's just kind of like forced in there, you know. Again, I haven't seen it. I'm talking out of my ass. Well, just like the idea of it irks you a bit because you're like, I don't know if I like that, and I understand that. Uh-huh. I I will say you could totally text me tomorrow and be like, No, you fucking liar. But I will say that uh, from what I saw, they don't really do jokes. Or it's sort of just be like, Oh look, it's Jack Black and Lizzo, and they kind of just give like information. Ah, uh, okay. Like, okay, okay, okay. They're like, Oh. It's like another episode of like you need to do this so we can give you this like one of those episodes. Mm. Is it like um Bill Murray and Ant Man? He's just like there and then he's yeah not. he's just there to give information. Ah uh, okay okay because from what I've seen, uh, the the um the idea I had was they played a much more prominent role than what... no okay okay okay. They're in there for like less than five minutes I guess, but because they're such big actors, like it feels longer. Mm. And I will say something very cute. Here's an article by Deadline. Uh, Lizzo had an interview and she said when I was a young girl my dad introduced me to Star Wars like a rite of passage the trilogy are his favorite movies and quickly became mine when John Favreau called me and offered me the role of the Duchess I cried all day wishing my Aww. dad was still with us because he'd be so proud Aww. Star Wars is a dream I never thought was possible but thanks to John Bryce and everyone in the galaxy I'm now part of the ever expanding saga of the stars that's cute I am an honorable company and forever grateful this is the way and may the force be with you and I thought that was so fucking cute I can't hate it yeah, yeah, that's cute. That's I'm not gonna hate on that. I'm not gonna hate on her. Like, you know, she has like a cute moment where she's like, "Me and Grogu," but it's not really, it's not really that bad, in my opinion, at least. You could probably hate it. I like I, I, said, I haven't seen it. Like, I think the last episode I saw, fuck, mm-hmm. it, I, I've, I'm like a handful of episodes, but uh, the last thing I remember was them getting the kid back. Mm-hmm. So I, I gotta, I'll, I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it my my homework to finish the season by the time we record again so that way i could come back to you at the full you know what and i feel like that's the thing about the show this season is that it doesn't feel as like pressing to watch the next one Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i think because we've described in the past that this season feels a little directionless uh like they've started to pick up a direction like okay now mandalorians come together why did i but it, it feels a little like you don't feel the urgency to watch the new episode as soon as it comes out yeah and i will because i'm a simp but you know you don't have to. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what other Star Wars news that you saw are you excited for? Uh, apparently, Andor's getting season two. Then that's yeah, that was always planned. Uh huh. So I'm glad they did the numbers. Uh, I've heard <laughs> this. I've heard great things by Andor. Can't wait to watch it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think we should probably just end it here. We're a little bit over the hour mark, not by a lot, but just image. Oh, I will say right now, okay, you said you, you really like Logan, right? Yeah. Okay, just because, you know, they're having this guy, James Mangold, direct, like, a Jedi origin story, and he did, like, Logan and stuff. Uh, it's going to be Disney, so he's not going to be able to have his full range, you know? Oh, I mean, people seem like that movie. I feel like I feel like Disney's might, I don't know. I can't say well, for Disney, well, hopefully think- they let him. I think a part of what made Logan so good was that they mm-hmm. just said, here's the keys to the kingdom. 
make it rated R, go crazy, you know? They mm-hmm. they gave us a, a true Wolverine. It wasn't, mm-hmm. like, watered down or anything like that. So I just, when whenever I see, like, oh, we, you know, I'm, this is never going to happen, but, like, Quentin Tarantino is directing a Star Wars movie, I'd be like, all right, that's cool. But I know they're going to limit him on what he can and can't do. So, you know? He's also doing the, he's also doing the upcoming Indiana Jones movie, which, um... I mean, cool. I've never seen a single Indiana you Jones movie. You've never seen Indiana Jones? Life. They're fucking good. The only what? thing I know about Indiana Jones is that as a kid, for some reason, somebody bought me Lego Indiana Jones. So I know the plots from the Lego version. Go watch the watch the original ones. The the mm-hmm. ones that came out like in the nineties, I think nineties or eighties. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but go watch those. They're they're really good. They're really fucking good. Right. I, I will say before we end. It's very funny seeing Harrison Ford not give a fuck about Star Wars. Because he's so at the excited. lead. Yeah. No, but getting so excited about Indiana Jones because he just doesn't care about Star Wars. He's like tired of it. I like, that, people will ask him, like, oh, would you like a movie? And he's like, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but like Indiana Jones, he's like, yeah, Indiana Jones, like adventure. Like he's so excited. <laughs> but uh yeah that's my final that's my all the all, all other star wars news uh i'm sure it's important but we just we ran out of time yeah. so. well we'll talk about it next week but uh noah where can people find you if they want to oh my touch? gosh if you want to find me you can find me at noah is garcia on twitter instagram and tiktok if you want to read my comic musing you can go to panels and pages when's the last time you I'm updated on. that one I have a post scheduled for this Wednesday. Ooh, jokes on, all jokes right. on you. I've been waiting to hear something like that. <laughs> and you can see my photography at Noah Garcia underscore photography on Instagram. And Lewis, where can people find uh, you? Side question. Are you still shooting on film? Or was is that was that like a phase? Uh, I only do it when I have... Um, Money? When, <laughs> yeah. No, I was about to say when I have like... When I feel it. Because I have a role of black and white. And I want us to use the whole role at like an event or something. Do it at Kevin's wedding. That'd be nice. That would. I'm. Oh, that's exactly what I was thinking. Okay. Anyways, um, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter as I'm Luis Gutierrez, and you can also find my work over at IGN.com, where I cover news, stories, and guides, and Gamespot.com, where I do the same exact thing. But yeah, Noah, what is uh, the homework today? is to watch Andor, I guess. My, <laughs> if you haven't seen Andor, go watch it. My homework for the week is you need to watch uh, a hypercut. And, I'm, and I know it's I know it's on YouTube. I gotta find it. A hypercut mm-hmm. of Order 66 where they have like six fucking screens going on at once. Oh, can, God. <laughs> I want you to have a sensory overload where you, <laughs> you're watching everything go down at your homework for me. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, well, bye! Bye bye.